Back in the summer, I had some snake problems. I had one get inside of my house and I had another one get inside of my garage. And while I was risking life and limb to deal with these demon spawns, I thought to myself, I need to do an Ekans run. Welcome back to the channel where I do solo Pokemon challenges. And the ultimate goal here is to rank them against each other at their several runs with optimizations. The rules and other general things can be found in the description, so check that out. And if you are a returning subscriber like Amy Montes, I do appreciate the support, but grab yourself a Sodi Pop and let's just dive into it. Ekans reminded me a lot of Rattata if its signature move was useless and it was weak to Alakazam. Now, it might sound like I'm dunking on this little snake already, but I legitimately think that there's a solid Pokemon underneath everything we are about to see. I have been wanting to do an Arbok run for about a year, and I just, I never found the time, but getting your first taste on the pre-evolved Pokemon just makes the payoff bigger when you get to the next stage, and that's the main reason we kind of tagged in Ekans into the mix today. Let's go over the basic information, and you can kind of get an idea of what this Pokemon is all about and the stats they're not going to look like much 60 attack is our best stat and even that's not too great and 55 speed when you're weak to psychic is kind of a red flag when you look at the totality of the stats you got 35 base hp you got 40 base special 44 base defense and you can kind of see that this slithery little guy is really frail and it cannot take a big hit even in a neutral situation for the level up learn set it's pretty plain rap and leer they're kind of like your bread and butter to sneak past brock and an early ish bite at level 17 can kind of hold you over before you start to transition to the TMs, which is honestly kind of the selling point of this Pokemon. You get Dig and Body Slam for powerful early to mid game moves, and you get late game staples like Earthquake and Rock Slide to cover pretty much anything. Mega Drain is also there if you can find a use for it, but this is a really good TM set, and it's what really got me excited to do this playthrough. So let's take it back to the actual run and talk about routing for a minute. With a Pokemon like Ekans, you know it's not going to be that fast. You know struggles are coming down the road and it all starts with Brock and that's where I always like to start for runs like this. I test out every level possible and let's kind of go over what gets us by and go over some thoughts about that. I'm going to start by getting just a little bit of experience from wild Pokemon and the next thing was to find a Kakuna. I get lucky here, I get one immediately and the idea was to get rid of some Leers because Rap's PP is going to deplete rapidly and struggle was usually needed. Then I fight everything and I'll just show the first part of the first bug catcher here. I'm leaning heavily into to Leer so that we can preserve power points and you'll see that I was a little too cautious when we look ahead at the next battle. But I do need to talk about this because it can be frustrating because if you miss wrap and you get hit with just a single string shot, you can essentially just kiss all your PP goodbye, it's gone. I don't set up leers, but I do miss, but luckily Weedle just goes for Poison Sting and this is important because if your speed was dropped, the Kakuna will get off a of Harden because it outspeeds you and you're just going to be here all day using every point of wrap that you have left. Now we don't have to look at the whole battle here, I'm just spamming wrap not that interesting we can look ahead now the final attempt was actually different than the rest of my runs because I have plenty of rap PP left just to get past this battle on the mandatory bug catcher and I got to reiterate here that in all of my little tests and my two full runs that I did before this I had to use struggle here so I did waste a little time by getting rid of Leer earlier but like I said earlier the start it can be a little bit frustrating so I didn't want to restart again and when that's over with it's time for everybody's favorite you already know what time it is it's time for some lot years blackout grinding I've touched on this before, I've touched on it a lot, but let me get a recap for those in the back so you can hear me. You want to beat the Diglett, you get the boosted 50% extra experience from trainers, and then you let the Sandshrew knock you out, and then you rinse and repeat. I love this in yellow version, and that was initially where I was going to play Ekans. You know that I, I test both versions, and the Brock split is significantly better, but at the end of the day, Poison just has too many problems. Red makes it a little bit easier, that's why we're playing this version today. Now, Blackout grinding in red is more difficult and slow for multiple reasons, but just know that you do have to be a little bit careful showing up at level 9 with a frail Pokemon like this. Just like with Brock and Red version, the Light Years Junior Trainer has two extra levels on each Pokemon, and that's not really the bad part. It does make it a little bit more difficult, but more experience is always great, but the main thing is that the Sandshrew also has Sand Attack, whereas it only has Scratch and Yellow version. This means it's going to be a 50-50 on if it's going to attack you, and guys, sometimes this little shrew, it can just go for like four or five straight Sand Attacks in a row. It wastes my time, it wastes Ekans time, it's wasting your time, it's wasting everybody's time, and it can get a little bit tedious, but thanks to the magic of video editing, we don't have to relive the moment in full. So while some of this grinding is playing, I would like to talk about Brock and what I've kind of discovered during rounding, and it's that you can actually do Brock at level 13 with Ekans. It's a little inconsistent, but it does work, 
but I got away from that because ultimately you need extra experience going ahead and you can kind of like kill two Pidgeys with one Geodude by being stronger and getting a little bit faster through things like Route 3, Mount Moon, and ultimately Nugget Bridge, but we don't want to bring up Nugget Bridge this early in the video. What we decided to do for today was going pretty decently far into level 14 and this does some great things for Brock, but it also sets me up for exactly what I need in the future. Doing it this way means I don't have to heal my rap PP. I can just kind of heal up after the like your junior trainer and we can just go straight into Brock. And I guess we haven't really talked about rap in a while on my channel. Like most of you know, trapping moves are lethal if you outspeed your opponent in Gen 1, and if you don't miss, you can just win. Rap and multi-hit moves in general, they're great on Brock because even though he has really high defense, it'll do a minimum of one damage, and let's say you hit five times, you're gonna do five damage, which is a pretty solid amount at this point in the game. So the important thing here is Leer breakpoints. If I can get four Leers to stick, Rap will do a pretty high three damage per tick, and that's gonna melt the Geodude. The problem is that red version, he has defense curl, and you kind of have to do this back and forth until it tackles you, and you just kind of rinse and repeat that until it gets to nine defense. But when you get to that point, you do outspeed, and it goes slowly but surely, you kind of just chip away at it. The great thing about this route is that I hit level 15 after the Geodude, and now I have 27 speed. That means I can outspeed the Onyx, and you you know the implication with rap and outspeeding. It's all about the implication. You could lose if you get unlucky here, but you really don't need that much HP. If it uses Bide just once, it's really easy to get the five necessary Leers to stick, and at that point, Rap is going to do two damage a hit, and you just spam the A button. And I would suggest asserting dominance over Brock here by just staring him straight in the eyes as you have a little bitty snake slowly suffocating his onyx, and that's really all there is to it. If you didn't know, I love runs like this because you need to mess around and really calculate the Brock split to a fine degree, and it, can, it makes sure that kind of fun keeps going because the whole run needs planning until the very end. We'll get bite sooner rather than later at level 17, and let's just kind of cover the high points and talk about the extra battles. We have the optional bug catcher on Route 3, and then off to the left, there's a bug catcher in Mount Moon. Next up is the fan favorite super nerd. There's a bug catcher near the super nerd that we take on. There's the double grass last, and then we find the youngster that's near the mega punch ladder and we're gonna finish off this little grind session by taking on the eradicate grunt now i bring this guy up sometimes but his power level is far above anything else in the game to this point it's a little absurd and i almost cut this battle out because i had a lot of resets here in practice now at the end of the day you just wanted to use tail whip at least once and going straight bite gave me the best results this trainer is grossly overpowered and it got a well-deserved nerf in yellow version at the end of the day this is going to take me up to level 20 at the end of mount moon and let's just jump straight into rival number two level 20 is significant here and it's the next breakpoint we need because not outspeeding the pidgeotto felt awful now our damage still sucks but remember rap guys i'm going to channel my inner menace today and i'm just going to wrap it into submission the goal is to get it into bite range and you can see that it does get off some quick attacks and i'm a little hurt but honestly this is about as good as it gets after that we do have the damage to kind of just cruise past the next two pokemon and we do get low on squirtle but we survive and and that's, it's a good one-shot victory here. I'd also like to say really quick that I'm experimenting with Gen 2 sprites with Gen 1 colors, and it's a little bit weird on blue Pokemon specifically, and I need to point that out, because things like Squirtle and maybe later Nidoqueen or Gyarados, they look weird, but it is what it is. I'll fix it later. Now we got Nugget Bridge, and I'm not even gonna say it. I can't keep saying the word cluster in every single video, guys. YouTube is gonna start coming for me, and I'm gonna be ostracized from the community, but I will skip ahead to talk about how it feels and kind of what you need to do to get the most out of Ekans. You have to do kind of like a leer and to bite a lot on this route, but a lot of things like the Pidgey with the sand attack, you have to use wrap, soften it up a little bit, and finish it off with bite. Now, I still get hit with sand attacks here and there, but I guess the whole point is that wrap is almost like this defensive tool where you try trade some in-game time to kind of keep your health up and lessen the load. And it's just, it's not like most runs where you just spam your fastest move, you're just holding down A and you're yawning, waiting for it to all be over. I don't do any extra battles here. And afterwards we can pick up Dig. And in earlier iterations of the route, I was skipping Misty and doing the whole backtrack to surge style of route. But I found that grinding just a little bit more before Brock and picking up this optional swimmer in Misty's gym, it gives us just enough experience to hit level 25. And that's gonna allow me to take off on Misty now and it's actually faster than the other way but let's just take a look at Misty and see how it goes
The main reason for 25 is simple. Extra damage is all you need to know. The damage rounding threshold allows you to get rid of Staryu immediately, but you already know that's not the problem. I will say that not being weak to water means that Misty can use Tackle and just kind of do whatever it wants, but the only real thing you don't want to see is a Bubble Beam crit. You're going to see here that even with a turn 1 X Defend and her throwing several moves at us, I'm able to do quite well, and it's a 4 shot, which isn't ideal or the fastest battle in the game, but like I said earlier, backtracking to Surge after Celadon is kind of like a slow walk of shame, and I'm glad I could avoid it. Now I want to talk about the Triple Pidgey Jr. Trainer. We haven't brought this one up in a while either. Ekans is bringing up a whole lot of memories here. But this is another case where rap just lessens the pain. You cannot one-shot these Pidgeys, so you need to soften them up. It doesn't feel great, but you know what else doesn't feel great? Getting hit with five sand attacks and being pecked to death by a herd of wild Pidgeys. On the SS and Body Slam is a shining little piece of treasure begging for us to pick it up. And when you combine that with Dig, our moves are at least looking pretty solid. I do get the candy, but as for rival number three i'm kind of a new man no more rap strats i'm slamming my little snake body on everything that moves i do get a crit on pidgeotto which is cool but it's not needed but this is another example of needing a certain speed breakpoint again level 26 specifically is what was needed to outspeed kadabra we are one level over that by the time we make it here but just keep in mind that there's already been three spots in the game already where we needed to be a certain speed and it's going to be like a key factor especially towards the end game of the run surge is next we have dig but this is not a guaranteed fight. You want to survive a Thunderbolt, so you want to be at max health, which I'm not here, so I kind of took a risk that was not necessary at all. But for the most part, Dig just kind of crushes his team. There's no need to really spend too much time here. Now, my friends, this is normally where we would skip over Rock Tunnel and just pick back up in Celadon. And remember earlier when I said my wrapping days were through? I lied. There's one tough trainer here. The Pokemaniac that has a Cubone and a Slowpoke is a menace. Cubone can Bone Clubby for massive damage. It has high defense, and it can just be an over overall pain. On top of that, it can growl you, which is honestly worse than the super effective ground damage. The solution here, just like earlier, just wrap it into some ranges, then take it out. Now, once again, wrap is kind of like a pseudo defensive move. It feels a little bit weird, but when we make it to the slowpoke, it does have confusion. It's bulky as well, but you are just too frail to be growled and tank multiple bone clubs and confusions reliably, and I think this was the best solution. It wasn't elegant, and the footage is going to look kind of clean, but it was pretty rough in practice, and now we can look ahead at the big city. I actually think Saffron is the big city, but I'm talking about Celadon. I don't know why I just don't edit this out, but let's move on. First up is the Rocket Hideout, and I'm picking up all the high money items. It's kind of like a juxtaposition from the last run when I mused over vitamins and how the extra pickups are not worth it for elite runs, but Ekans is not elite, and let's not pretend that it is. I actually do even more today. I'm picking up Double Edge and Nugget just to sell because I want even more money, and that's because I'm pretty much going to put a funnel into Ekans' mouth and pump as many vitamins as humanly possible into its mouth today. And we actually have to look at Giovanni today. I made a teeny tiny little routing mistake here. I should have gotten rid of Poison Sting and kept Leer looking back because it does take two digs to get rid of Onyx and Rhyhorn and it would just save a little bit of time. But it's really not that big of a deal because the problem here in this footage is that Rhyhorn gets a magical crit. It only has like 0.3% chance to crit and that's really what puts me in a bad position. But Leer on Kangaskhan would be great if you had maybe like a little bit of HP left and it uses Rage. If you ever want to make Rage look like a really good move, use rap against it. It's going to make rage essentially a super swords dance and this is where we have our first reset of the run. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. The next attempt goes roughly the same with the one key difference is that we don't get crit by Rauhorn. And here you're going to see how much I struggle on Kangaskhan. To me, Kangaskhan's a beast and I'd recommend you to watch the stream that I did a while ago just to really see how good it is. But we barely survive here. We don't have to question our entire route because we don't have one reset. Not that bad, but it was tough. The next order of business is Pokemon Tower, and Rock Slide would help here, but it's a fight that's already easy. We can just kind of use Dig and Body Slam. And let me foreshadow something here with the Execute. We will never have a way to one-shot it, and good AI will make it go for Hypnosis in most cases unless it has another Psychic move on its set. It does connect here. We wake up immediately so we don't waste any time, but this is a problem I had to look out for, especially later in the game. And the only other thing to note here is that you need to outspeed Kadabra, which we do, so we can just keep going on. 
After that, I immediately go tackle Erica, and this one's not too bad. I did hold off to make this one go a little bit faster, but the fact that good AI will make her not use grass moves means that maybe I should have went here earlier, maybe got Mega Drain and made Giovanni a little faster. I don't think that this way would make it save any significant time since Kangaskhan was the real problem, but it is something I thought about, and spoiler alert, I never really found a great use for Mega Drain in the playthrough. Heading towards Fuchsia, I would like to talk about something I started thinking about in my Moltres stream a little bit ago. I eliminate any RNG from HM users in my runs, and I've done that for a long time, and when rival number 5 is tough, you often have to go to center bar first, and you're going to need a Surf user, and this run does need to do that. This new strat is just to kind of YOLO ball the Snorlax, catch it, and that's going to replace the Lapras you would normally get after rival number 5, and it's just much faster than what I used to do with getting the good rod, fishing up a Surf user, and still needing to get Lapras for strength later. This isn't an every run thing but I do like the idea a lot and I'm actually not going to show the safari zone today I am going to be picking up everything from vitamins full restores and the last HMs of the run so there's no need to make any cuts and edits we've seen it a million times you guys know what goes on down there instead let's go shopping and guys this is the most annoying NPC in the entire game I can't tell you how much I hate this degenerate waste of life and that's the nicest way I can put it look at how long she just absolutely wastes everyone's time and sometimes in streams I say not very nice things about this. Just look at how long she held me up here. It's very annoying. And we have a lot of money today. Outside of picking up the Pokedoll for Mimic later, we have a ton of vitamins to get. We also get access to Rock Slide for some nice coverage here, and let's kind of bring it back to vitamins. I talked in the last video about speed being the main binary vitamin for runs because outspeeding is often a matter of life and death, but notice here I'm just getting three Carbos out of the eight total vitamins I can afford, and that's because you have to take into account the free Carbos that you can get in the Safari Zone, Sylph Co, and the Pokemon Mansion. My goal for this run was to route in a way where I can just kind of use all those free vitamins to max out my stat experience, hit that vitamin threshold, and it's something we haven't talked about in a while, but you'll see how I do it in the routing today. This is going to take us over to what I've been calling a half seal for quite a while. And the main reason is that vitamin routing. Alakazam will obliterate us into 7 million pieces if we try to fight rival number 5 now. So I'm just going in here, I'm picking up things like Earthquake, I'm picking up the Carbos, and we're going to clear just a little bit of it for extra levels. Something I forgot to bring up earlier is the Ekans line signature move. It's Glare, and this move is awful. It's just a worse Thunder Wave, and by worse, I mean significantly worse. It's like Game Freak where like, hey guys, you know Thunder Wave, the move that paralyzes other Pokemon with 100% accuracy and over one fifth of the Pokemon can learn it. Let's take that, give it 25% less accuracy, and make it a signature move of Ekans and Arbok. Like I said, I forgot to bring this up earlier when we actually didn't learn it, but to make things even more frustrating, I get hit with this little, the little card key grunt hits me with it. But Glare, not a good move. Overall, I am here to clear out the third floor, the ninth floor, and the eighth floor before I move on, and this is very deliberate. We've talked about vitamins a lot, and this is the max that you can train before doing the next few parts of the game, and you can still pick up the Carbos and Pokemon Mansion. If you did it any other way, you would be over the vitamin threshold, and we don't want that. Now we can hop into Koga's Gym, and I have to talk about Psychic Types. Let's just jump into the first juggler. Over level 40 is important for two reasons. The first is that you need to be able to one-shot the Drowsies, or you're going to be in for a long day. And the second is that you barely outspeed the Kadabra here. Remember, you guys are going to see the optimized run, but imagine a world where you just say, hey, I'll come here at level 35 and I have Earthquake and Kogo will be easy, and you just get blasted down by Confusion and Psy Beams. It, it feels pretty bad. As for Koga, you could have done this earlier if not for the mandatory Psychic Trainers. We just talked about that. And overall, this one's not a series of one-shots, but it's pretty safe. Self-destruct at the end could cause issues, but Fate, it had me run out of EQ power points. I have to use Dig. It goes for Self-Destruct while I'm underground, and I love to see that. And it goes without saying that the speed badge boost here, it's going to be huge for the run. That's going to take us to a brisk swim down to Cinnabar, and the agenda is to make our way to that Carbos as fast as we can. I don't think I've said this in a while, but you can only use vitamins up until 25,600 stat experience, and our speed stat is right on the brink here. There are other runs on the channel like Rhydon where I meticulously plan out my vitamin usage, but it always feels really satisfying, and when that's done, extra training is back on the menu, boys. We have several DEFCON 1 level threats at the end of the game, and without a badge 
damage boosting move, Ekans needs to train its little snake heart out. There are three trainers left after we get the Carbos in the mansion, and I'm not gonna show everything, but Blaine's trainers, they're also really efficient since we have three moves that are super effective to fire, so I get to work. And at the very end, I get out of the final trainer. I have to use a full restore, and since I'm battling trainers, I don't actually have to talk to the machines to answer that age old question. Now, you can see me forget here, and I backtrack down, but guys, I had a revelation. I don't need a machine to tell me if Tombstoner, brother, is actually the 28th TM or not. It was in my heart all along, and it's very important to know. As for Blaine, our level is intentional here. The first two Pokemon are whatever they go down easy, and let's look ahead at the Rapidash. The level 45 damage and the extra level puts us into a speed tie and gives us enough damage to have a decent range, and that's really about the best I can do. Growl would be the worst case scenario, but I take a ton of damage here just from Stomp, and that's gonna be a little bit problematic because we are really frail, and I, I can't outspeed the Arcanine. It goes for takedown, and it puts an end to our win streak that we've had going on since the first Giovanni battle. Moving ahead in the second attempt, I get a Tail Whip from the Rapidash, and that's both good and bad. It lets me hit the range to guarantee the one shot, so that's good, but Arcanine is also licking its chops with my lowered defense. The second good thing is that I actually outspeed the Arcanine now via the badge boost glitch, and Earthquake does a ton of damage, but Blaine, he lets that Fire Blast loose, but Ekans stands tall, it survives in the yellow health, and that means we get our sixth badge of the run. Now we have all the badge boost in hand, our relevant vitamins are maxed out, but we still need a little help and we're gonna return to Sylph to finish it off. As much as I would love to not have to do any additional training, we just, we have to. I'm not gonna show everything, but I do finish off the seventh floor, the sixth floor, the fifth floor, fourth floor, second floor. And as the last battle plays out, I'm gonna tell you guys that I made a pretty big mistake. I'm supposed to be level 51 after this final battle and I'm missing about 1500 experience. Even when I'm like manually reviewing the footage for the video, I couldn't figure out where I missed it. And I'm thinking, you know, 1500, not that big of a deal. We can just finish off the run, be fine, no one cares. But I want you guys to remember this because I'm gonna bring it up a couple of times looking ahead. But when we are done with everything, it's time for rival number five. We put it off pretty much as long as we can. What you'll notice in this battle is that even at the level 50 damage rounding threshold, super effective damage cannot one-shot the Pidgeot, and that just kind of tells you a lot about Ekans and how this run feels. Overall, we don't see any sand attacks, but there's just, there's a lot of times in this run where you just feel like an extra 10 or 15 base attack would push you over the top, but that's a story for another day. Let's skip past the Growlithe, we don't have to worry about it, and let's take a look at Execute, which I touched on a little bit earlier. It does have two psychic moves here, so Hypnosis isn't guaranteed, and it does go for the Reflect after a body slam. Now, watch this. I Gen 1 miss a body slam. That's one out of 256 chance. And I thought the computer was about to screw me over, but it does miss the hypnosis. I take it out so there's no raging needed today. And that's going to bring us to the Alakazam. And this is going to be the least threatening Alakazam out of the final four we're going to see in the run. We do outspeed this one massively, and it's just because it's necessary for what's coming up and how deep we are into the game. Alakazam isn't done being talked about, but this one is just kind of like a little snack before dinner. And at the and there's not much to say about Blastoise. It's tanky, but we do chip away at it. We get the victory. Afterwards, I do pick up Mimic for later, and we're gonna battle the trainers in the fighting dojo. Now, let me reiterate that you need a ton of speed for the end game, and we just don't really have many more places to train. And now it's time to talk about Sabrina. This is one of the key moments that we've kind of put off for as long as we could, and let's just see how it goes. The first part of the fight is simple. We have the damage, we have the speed, everything's a one shot, there's not much thinking to do. We've already put in the work and it's paying off. Now remember earlier when I said that I was about 1500 experience short? This is the first part of two where it's really gonna matter. 115 speed will tie the Alakazam, but if I had that experience, I would outspeed it. Tying is just kinda good enough here because I win the coin flip and I one shot it, and at the end of the day it was risky, but it was good enough to get the win, and we'll come back to this missing experience a little bit later.
Let's just kind of pick it back up at Giovanni for the final badge. And when we talk about yellow version, I said I practiced it. Things like Koga, Sabrina, Giovanni, Lorelai, Lance, and the Champion, those kind of outweighed the benefit of a faster Brock split. And it goes without saying that Red Giovanni, it's not the best trainer in the world. He does have high defense, and that means that most of these Pokemon are not going to be one shot. So I, I just get chipped down consistently throughout the fight. And I want you guys to notice what I was talking about with the Gen 2 Sprite porting directly into Pokemon Red. The Nidal King, it looks looks weird. I need to do some changes to this. But at the end of the day, Nidoking King does hit me with Thrash and at this point I'm in the yellow health and right on, it's, it's up in the air at this point. But Giovanni, he's my boy. He's got my back. He goes for that patented guard spec by Silphco and that means we take the eighth badge and now we're moving on towards the real end game. After the battle, I'm hurt, I'm missing PP, and I go heal. This is not interesting or relevant at all, but rival number six is coming up, and in theory, rival number six has kind of a cheat code to it, but only if you manage your experience correctly. I've mentioned the missing experience multiple times already, and this is where it's gonna cost me the most in the run, but let's not just talk about it. Let's dive in and see exactly what I mean. Keep in mind at this point, I'm still thinking that things are just going to work themselves out. I haven't realized the situation yet, but being a poison type, it does mean that Pidgeot and Growlithe, they both have agility. They're just going to spam it against me, and I want to take it. That's the cheat code. You get the speed, you get the badge boost, and it makes the fight really simple. In a perfect world where my experience is planned out, I would have leveled up on the Growlithe, I would execute the plan, and I would just take care of business. Now the worry starts to sink in when I don't level up, and I knew my experience was about to cost me here. I do Mimic Agility, I set up anyway, but in the back of my mind I thought maybe, you know, we could level up after the Growlithe, I could set up on the Execute, but here's the big kicker, here's why it fell so hard. You only get 900 experience from Growlithe because it's so pathetic, and that means I'm still short of a level up. This means I'll perfectly level up going into the Alakazam, and let me talk about the Egg real quick. At this stage, it only has grass and poison moves. It's not going to be spamming hypnosis, that's not an issue, this one isn't bad at all, but I do take it out, and let's see if we actually have the damage, if we can maybe just get through the fight. I do outspeed with agility, I toss out an earthquake, and it's sadly not enough. But look at this, the Alakazam goes for a fleck, and since we've done so much damage already, I can finish it off, and this is great. The experience didn't cost us, I won the battle, I was worried about nothing, right? But Blastoise is last, and I'm doing my snaky best here, I'm just chipping away, but I'm missing some health. And later I get a skull bash. I'm one move away, but a lethal hydro pump puts me down And we have to go back in to see if it was actually kind of luck or not picking back up in the second attempt We're gonna look at the execute just to kind of drive the point home that it's not a threat in this battle Leech seed can be annoying, but it's better than earlier iterations with hypnosis and let's take a look at Alakazam again Earthquake can't one hit we've already seen and it's gonna go for psychic here And when a non critical hit psychic can take you from 100% to zero, you know things are bad It was at this point Point, I knew my little mistake was gonna cost me. Now the rival music, it's still gonna play here, but rather than just ruin the run and keep just going in and in and into this fight, I reloaded an earlier save. I do this very rarely. This is before Giovanni, and the perfect trainer to right my earlier wrongs was this black belt here on the side of Giovanni's gym. He has a single Machoke. It gives about 1,400 experience points, and that should be exactly what I need to set things right. Now I'll talk about this blunder later, and if I want to adjust anything at the end of the run, when we're going over the rankings and that sort of thing but let's just dive back into the rival now when we take out the Rhyhorn we level up and remember this was the original plan all along and this is gonna lead us to taking agility from Growlithe we're gonna set up three times we're gonna get the speed we're gonna get a few badge boost and let's skip ahead to the Alakazam we already outsped but now since the badge boost stay look at this immaculate one shot and it's frustrating that the run kind of came to this but it's all good now if we can just get past the blast toys. It doesn't hurt that I am at full health now, but the extra damage is really apparent here. I can almost two-shot it, but it is a range, but I get bailed out with a crit, and that ends the battle. And this one, it felt pretty good to finally get it over with. We've seen the problems at this point, and it shouldn't be a surprise that Ekans isn't done with training. Victory Road has some of the best training in the entire game, and I want to take advantage of it, but I'm also going for a slightly more risky, lower level finish here. I'm trying to get the fastest time. Remember, that's always the ultimate goal. I keep things really simple. I take on the two cool trainers that are found on the very first floor here, and then when we get to the next floor, I take on this black belt, and there's a juggler that's not too far away from him down the path. And when we get done there, there's only two trainers left, 
And the first is the cool trainer with the Chansey. I love this trainer, it gives a ton of experience. And for the last trainer, I had my choice. I ended up going with the water cool trainer because the grass one, it really liked to waste my time, but ultimately this gets me halfway through 59 and that's exactly where I wanna be. And I don't guess there's anything left to do other than let's take a look at the Elite Four and see how it all went down. Lorelai's up first, and at the start of the fight, it's about as simple as it can be. Good AI means Dugong will only spam rest, so the play here is to soften it up, just throw out a body slam, let it use rest, and then finish it off with a couple of rock slides. Cloister is tanky, it can absorb multiple rock slides, so it's really not a big issue, especially when I crit like I do here, we can just keep it going. On Slowbro, it's no surprise that the strat here is going to be to mimic amnesia, boost my special, and I'm going to use that just to survive hits at the end, just so we can get through pretty easy. It goes as planned, things are looking really good. We have Rock Slide for Jinx. I can just one tap it. And this is kind of primed for a clean sweep and a fast victory here against Lorelei. But Lapras, it has other plans today. Now, I'm not going to, I'm going to try my best not to get frustrated watching this back. But tell me what you think the odds are of this event happening. Now, it's going to select a random move. It'll usually start with Confuse Ray. It has nothing super effective. So it hits the Confuse Ray. I hit myself in Confusion. That, that skips my turn. Then it selects Hydro Pump. It gets a crit on the Hydro Pump to bypass my Amnesia Boost. And this one, it just felt bad. Shame on you, Lorelai, for getting a win like this. Let's dive into attempt number two, and things go perfect. I'm at full health. I get the Jinx down. I have the Amnesia boost. Everything's looking great, but Lapras comes in. It's a little smug little face. It's looking at me. It knows something I don't. And that's the fact that its Confuse Ray has a magical property to make me hit myself every single time. Never mind the Paralysis Proc on Body Slam or the fact that I can survive a Hydro Pump at 39 HP. What I want to focus on is me hitting myself three straight times while confused. It has me rolling my eyes in the back of my head. What what else can you really say about this? How many coin flips can you lose in a row? That's four at this point. Here's what I can say about it. On the third attempt, Cloister, it gets into the mix. It decides, hey, Lapras is bullying this dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in here. It chips me down to half health, and even though things go pretty smooth after that, we're kind of staring down the Lapras in a worse position. Turn one, good damage, but I get the Confuse Ray. And at this point, I'm like Walter White in the Crawl Space episode, and you already know, I'm gonna hurt myself for a fifth consecutive coin flip loss. I can, I can survive the next move but look at this rock slide barely failed to take care of business and a body slam takes me out and guys i'm not gonna lie looking back at this footage it's it's ridiculous lorelei has all the cheat codes turned on today and ekans is just unlucky it's caught in the crosshairs now i'm gonna show you something that pardon my language here it straight up pisses me off there's no other way to say it this is the worst attempt by far never mind dugong it's guaranteed but when we move ahead i get hit with clamp spot cannon and check out the sixth consecutive confusion proc that I hit myself with after supersonic. Now I'm limping here. I'm at a mere 35 health. And at this point, I kind of, I consider just doing the run over again, especially when you look back at the experience I messed up earlier, but let's skip ahead. Lapras, it's put me through the ringer this run and I'm in a sorry state, but I do crit on the rock slide and that triggers a retroactive super potion and I just win. It's funny how things go sometimes and I'm just done with it. What is, what else is there to say? Let's move on. I'm done with Lorelai. Bruno is up next and we'll be thorough. We'll go over it just a little bit. We don't have a ton of damage. I guess I could take Harden for badge boost, but I kind of opt just to get through the Onyx, take Ice Punch, and go through the battle that way. It's a little slow. It's a little steady. And the only threat here is if you went for Body Slam on Hitmonchan and maybe took some counter damage, so I avoid that. And it's just kind of another week of Bruno. Let's get to the more important stuff. After the battle, it's time for candies. And the master plan is almost complete. I use 9 of the 11 rare candies here. That gets us to 70. There's really no real significance to 70 other than this is the most candies I can use without hurting the champion fight. And this is going to take us straight into a very easy hack at the battle. We have Earthquake. And just like rival number 5 earlier, we are over leveled here. And that's just because of what's ahead. It's necessary. And the only thing that happens in this battle is that Golbat survives a rock slide it gets off haze and if you didn't know haze is going to take away your regular badge boost you're supposed to have so we're a little bit weaker but we're at such a high level it just doesn't matter this one is a slaughter up next is lance and prepare yourself for the most blue gyarados that you've ever seen i actually have some trouble here and rock slide misses I have to tank a Dragon Rage, then it throws out a Hyper Beam, and this has me pretty hurt. It has me personally feeling in real life like the Ekans Hurt Sprite looks. But there is a break in this fight. It's been a while since we've had a Poison Top in Red version on Lance, 
But the Dragonairs, they are only going to use agility so we can take it, we can set up and make things a little bit easier for us. And looking ahead, the only real thing that can threaten you is Aerodactyl and it's unfortunate that we lose the badge boost going into this. That means it's going to hang on, it gets a potion and ultimately we're just too low from the Gyarados and that's going to give us another reset. On a tip number two, it, it's simple. It starts out I get hit with a critical hit Hydro Pump and what can you do about that? Nothing. Finally on the third attempt, things go picture perfect. I get a badge boost from Gyarados, I hit my moves, and by the time I take agility and mow down the two Dragonairs, I'm at full health. And I guess technically the Aerodactyl could do something here, but it's just not likely with this move pool. I actually just get the crit here and we don't have to worry about it at all. And just like the other dragons, Barrier is a psychic type move and Dragonite will only spam this and the battle is over. The only thing left to say is that I do have two more candies, I use them, and now we can take a look at the champion fight at level 73. Pidgeot is first, we have Rock Slide. We don't really need to talk about this, but instead let's start talking about the Alakazam already before it comes out. I would like to say that level 73 is risky. It's not a guaranteed one shot. Level 75 would be much better for consistency, but I take the risk even further than that because there are more problems in the fight, but let's kind of bring him in. The guest of honor, everybody, it's Alakazam. Let's talk about it. I actually want to mimic recover, and you might be thinking, why would you let Alakazam get a free move? Because I can tank a hit. But here in the first attempt, you're going to see me just get crit with the psychic and just like in the Parasite Grace, there's not much I can do about it, but it's kind of part of the risk. It's a reset. Let's move on. On the second attempt, you see things really work out here. I take recover and it just goes for two reflex and things are much better. But let me reiterate that I can tank a non crit psychic at this level, but this is obviously a better outcome. I'll ride on. I want to fish for some leers or tail whip for badge boost and it's just, it's not having it today. I waste time, do resisted damage. I recover health. I do as much as I can to get a leer or a tail whip. Please toss me a bone here. And at the end of the day, I just have to move on without the boost and it really doesn't matter for Arcanine. A burn would be devastating, pretty much a guaranteed reset, but it goes smooth here. It really wasn't an issue, but we've talked about the egg several times and this is where it's going to be at its worst. Without boost, we cannot just get through its health and it takes me too long to get rid of it. So that means that hypnosis is basically inevitable. From here, I do actually get some good luck. It misses, I get paralysis and things look great, but a full restore at the end means that it's going to be a clean reset. And you already know I'm gonna get hit with the sleep and I just I never wake up it's a little bit unlucky but this is really what you need recover for and you can see why I would need some boost to make this a little smoother on the next attempt we once again we get a double reflect so that's really cool and on ride on I need ride on listen to me I need you to cooperate I stall as much as I can and I actually get four defense lowers to boost my stats and let's see how that's gonna affect the fight the first thing is that it puts Arcanine into a clean one-shot range but that's not the problem the real problem is executor and it really just comes down to this hypnosis will it hit it you can see that with the boost it puts body slam into a pretty easy two shot range and it does miss the hypnosis here that means i can just finish it off and this is how the battle is supposed to go that leaves blastoise at the end now i crit here but it doesn't matter because it is a two shot range it's pretty clean and when you factor in the boost to my special it puts me in a very comfortable position and i just i finish this battle off and that's gonna end the run Ekans finishes they run with a time of 3 hours, 49 minutes, and 24 seconds with 11 resets, but I'm going to make an addendum today. Normally, I do this with streams, but I'm going to be striking two resets from the record today. The messed up experience, it cost me some time, so that's punishment in itself, but I think in no world if I would have done the run over again, I would never have two resets on rival number six. It's a consistent fight, and if I did do another run, I think it's highly likely that I would have way better luck on things like Giovanni number one, Blaine, and even Lorelai, but those are what ifs. And the truth is, the honest to God truth is I don't want to replay Ekans for a fourth time. No one's going to make me do it. Now this gives us a tier card rating of 64.97 and that feels about right. It felt a little bit weak in terms of damage through most parts of the game. Using rap slows it down. Poison is not a great defensive type. And at the end of the day, you just need a ton of levels to overcome the many challenges of the run. 
I'm gonna roll out this tier list here, and this is uh, this is Matt from the future. I had to go back and re-edit a lot of the stuff, and I had to redo some audio. So if you've watched recent streams or you've paid attention to the Shadow Lugia video, I've been doing the pseudo Mount Muma nip, and to correct past runs so that they aren't obsolete, and so that I don't have to redo like 65 different runs, I have fully adjusted every single run on the tier list. Let me just talk about that for a second. Essentially, I collected a ton of data points from how fast it is to go through Mount Moon with no encounters versus the average time it would take to go through with the full encounter rate and after about 40 or 50 data points I just subtracted the two numbers from there I adjusted each run by an average of 1 minute and 54 seconds and then I tweaked the formula the 0 to 100 number so that it stays the same and I I think that's the best solution as we scroll through the tier list you're gonna see that Ekans is third on the D tier behind Rattata and Scyther and there's no shame in that I will say that runs like this Krabby or Sanctuary they just kind of get me hopped up for that eventual evolved run because when you think about the extra stats or the extra starting moves I think it can really push these runs over the hump and solve a lot of the problems that the pre-evolved forms had I don't know how solid these runs will be but I think they'll be pretty good and I'm gonna have fun with them special shout out to my channel members and patreon supporters it means a lot to me and if you've made it to this point in the video you're a real one you can comment that down below you already know I just I really appreciate it now next week I do have a versus video lined up and I'm gonna be really honest with you guys this run took a lot to get through it was like three times longer than making a normal video and I'm just I'm really worried that the time invested is just not gonna be worth it so I guess what I'm trying to say is it would be great to see you guys show some support there I'm sure you will especially if you've made it this far but I'm gonna go finish that up and I'll see you then bye